This is MMA Pipeline. I'm Jason Hurth. We're here talking about UFC 241. Coming up, I'm very excited about this card for a number of reasons. There's a lot of big names on the undercard fighting people that are up and coming fighters that are not well known. Those always make for great fights. There's three fights that I want to talk about, and there's other notable names on the card to kind of just keep your eye on. Shanna Dobson, she's the first fight out the gate. High-level bantamweight. Dracar Close, Brazilian fighter. Manny Bermudez, big name. Rafael Assunza, who just fought for a title and coming off of a loss. He's fighting on the card as well, kind of making his way back, getting his uh, journeyman shoes back on after a big loss and having to come back. So he's he's bouncing right back into a fight. And Sodiq Youssef, these are all big names, all have title implications, all ranked fighters. Very cool. If not their rank, they should be. Um, but they're big names in the up and coming people. The three main cards that matter on the UFC 241 mark that I'm going to talk about today are uh, Nate Diaz versus Anthony Pettis. I have to do that one first, even though that one's the co-main. That's got to be in my number one favorite fight of that card. Um, next is Yo Romero. The one guy that father he's beating Father Time as we speak. He's 43 years old. Looks like he's carved out of stone. And fighting in the other, another guy who, uh, uh, who's who got uh, an amazing body is Paulo Costa. That fight has got great implications. Title implications. And Cormier versus Miocic too. Cormier coming off uh, knocking out Miocic for the title. I really like this fight. Not a big fan of Miocic. Miocic, as everybody knows me, anybody knows me knows that. So I, I still give him props as being one of the most successful heavyweight champions or former champions. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Starting off, uh, the whole thing is Nate Diaz versus Anthony Pettis. So Nate Diaz, a stranger to, to nobody in the fight game. Nate Diaz is coming off a pretty long layoff. Very interesting to see how he's going to fare against a surging Anthony Pettis. Anthony Pettis, you know, has been bouncing between wins and losses against the who's who of the sport and has been very active. I like this fight for a number of reasons. I, I it, it, There's really not a lot of title implications. You know, it's not a big deal. It's just this fight, it's just everything that we as fans, these are one of those fights that everybody wants to see. Neither guy's been in a boring fight. Even a lot of Pettis' losses, he's, he's just lost to Ferguson and he, and he just turned around and he knocked out Steven Thompson in, with an amazing Superman punch finish. From his days of, you know, destroying Ben Henderson as he did uh, with the, the ninja kick off the cage to the, you know, his crazy submission game. Anthony Pettis is a guy that you're never sorry to see him on a card. But when you see him facing the infamous Diaz brothers and the Stockton slap and the everything that the Diaz brothers brings to the table from bad attitudes to just... Just, and just a blistering pace. I really like this fight. The Diaz brothers are well known for a number of reasons for being huge uh, cannabis activists to being uh, the most well-conditioned fighters in the game to really beating legends themselves. And, you know, and I'm sorry, but, you know, uh, Nick Diaz a number of times in his career got got, got screwed by some bad judges, uh, in my opinion, that didn't know what they were looking at at the time. I really like Nate Diaz a lot. I love the Diaz brothers. I, I do not know who to pick. Pick. Due to the layoff, I think uh, Diaz has not been in there in a couple of years uh, due to him and Uncle Dana having a lot of issues. I'm going to have to go with Pettis. I'm going to call Pettis by decision, but I won't be upset however the fight goes. It's not that I think Diaz will not be in shape because that's never been the case. I mean, these are guys that actually run marathons and do triathlons for fun. They're definitely tough guys. The real deal, obviously. It's just that it's not the same thing as, as do time in the cage Pettis. They're both legends, and I love the fight. It's happening at 170. They're both normally fighting at 155, so that takes a lot of the stress off. I mean, I'm really looking for Anthony Pettis, who just stopped Stephen Thompson, Wonder Boy, who is a very, very tough individual and a very hard puzzle to crack on the feet. I think he's going to be too sharp for Diaz. I think he's going to shut Diaz down. I think he'll probably crack Diaz a couple times. Diaz will pull guard, and there's no way uh, Pettis will fall into that game, so we'll make him stand, and that's how I see the fight going. I could be wrong but that's the way I see it. Next is Yo Romero versus Paulo Costa. Romero versus Costa, what's good about this fight? Well, Costa is an undefeated fighter. His last two wins come against Johnny Hendricks in 2017, November of 2017. His last one was against Uriah Hall in June of last year, 2018. I really think this guy's legit, but it's his inactivity between fights. I don't know if it's injuries. I don't know if it's just he's training or what, but he's only doing about, he's averaging about a fight a year. And to step up 
up into the big leagues with your Romero. Romero's last two losses are split decision losses to the current champion. And one of those losses could have gone either way, in my opinion. And he's also destroyed a who's who of the sport from Leo to Machida, uh, knocking out former champions and champions up and down the line. Not just beating them, beating them soundly other than Whitaker. Whitaker's the only guy that's kind of given Romero fits. I don't think Paulo Costa has the firepower to harm. Well, I can't say that. He knocked out Johnny Hendricks, who's got a chin like a like a fire hydrant. So he probably he has the pot, he has the puncher's chance, I guess. That being said, only one person has ever knocked out Romero, and that was way earlier in his career. And for the last 12 fights, that hasn't, or probably 10 fights, that hasn't been an issue. I don't see it going that way. I think Romero will probably finish him. A lot of people would think a flying knee, but I'm gonna call a ground and pound stoppage late in the third. That's the way I see that one going. Romero has been way more active. Romero is, he's really kind of a force of nature. And again, the only guy that's ever really given him fits is, is Whitaker, our current champion. So I really think uh, he's one, this is one fight away for Romero. Romero wins this. He's the next in line. I'm going to say Romero, third round TKO. And then now we have the interesting rematch of Cormier versus Miocic. Cormier is an aging champion. He's had a heck of a career. Pound for pound, one of the greats, even though he's lost to John Jones, but everybody loses to John Jones. There's no shame in losing to John Jones. I mean, even the way that he lost to John Jones the first and the second time, uh, even though the second time doesn't isn't on the record books, it should be. Uh, John Jones uh, stopped him with a with a high kick and then finished him. I have a lot of respect for Cormier. I like Cormier as a person. I don't like his smack talk when he was when he gets into the war of words with Jones. Neither one of us wins. Nobody wins in that case. It's like watching little kids argue. Nobody wins, and we're all dumber for having heard it. Uh, I'm glad that there's not a lot of smack talk in this one, and and really, I've never heard Miocic do a lot of smack talking. Um, I don't like it when he talks. Period. I like watching him fight. I don't like watching him talk. Miocic has got the personality of this pen right here. And for that reason, I'm pulling for Cormier. But I think that, that Miocic is going to actually win the fight. I'm going to pull for Cormier, but the way I see the fight going, I think Cormier is going to get knocked out. He's been knocked out before by Jones. Um, I think Miocic has the boxing to do it. He's not going to make the same mistakes that he made last time. And honestly, I wonder if Cormier's, you know, the age isn't going to be a factor here. I think Father Time catches us all eventually. I think this is going to be that case. So I'm calling for Miocic to win the fight. I hope it doesn't happen. I'm going to hope and pray that Cormier can pull it out somehow. That's the beauty of MMA. You never know what's going to happen. It's like college football. You think it's going to be one way and something happens, you know? I'm excited about this sport uh, in the way that it's going. I'm just excited about this event is going to be amazing. Watch it. Uh, go to Buffalo Wild Wings, but rent it at home if you can. And when you rent it, you get a free year subscription to uh, ESPN Plus and it's well worth it. The ESPN Plus, I, I use it every day. So check it out, guys. Check out UFC 241. This is MMA Pipeline. I'm Jason Hurth. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>